trying to fit the fascinator in there. Yeah. Isn't it fascinating? Fascinating trying to get that in there. Mine is really long, so like an bow and arrow. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Raja. And Raven. And you're watching this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Fashion Photo Review. Was before you went and lost your mind. Bring back my girls. Bring back my girls. Bring back my girls. Bring back Ooh. my Oh, sorry girl. So oh, sorry. Girl. My phone is blowing up. I'm getting a bunch of notifications from people here. You are? Raven, I'm using Tammy. Well, Raja, what is Tammy? Tammy is a dating and social networking platform where LGBTQ plus people, regardless of gender or sexuality, can meet up and connect with each other. So it sounds like it's not just for quick hookups, but more for meaningful connections. Precisely. Finding acceptance can be very, very difficult, especially on these social social networking apps. But on the Tammy app, you're not alone. Well, there are a lot of us and we're all unique. And the folks on Tammy accept you for who you are. You are accepted. We are not different. We are diverse. This is where you'll find the right support to be yourself at home. Tammy is the family you choose. Bring back my girl. We are going to be tooting and booting the looks from the main stage of season 13 of... So the category today is Fascinator. I live for cute, beautiful, fierce, and ornate things plopped on top of your head to finish off a look. Now, when I think of fascinators, you actually pop in my head because you are a fascinator queen. You know, a fascinator is one of those things that you just have to... Own. It can sometimes be ridiculous. There are times where you can see people wearing one and you go, girl. Mm -mm. The reason why they're probably called fascinators is because they're meant to be fascinating. If people are fascinated on the fascinator, fascinated on the fascinator, it's a job well done and you are fascinating. Let's see if these queens is fascinating with their fascinating fascinators on the mm -hmm. main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race. Category is fascinating. Fascinated. Let's bring on our first lady. Olivia Lux. She's got a vinyl lab coat. Those gloves. I love those gloves. And the fascinator itself is fascinating. It's beautiful. I love the color. I love the way it's kind of surrounding her face. You can tell this was made for her. It kind of looks like it's supposed to be like mercury. It's a splash. This challenge is not about gloves at all, but my eyes go directly to those gloves. I love them. I love a big baggy glove. That was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the fascinator itself is fascinating. I love that splash. It's got an organic sort of shape to it and I love it. I think it's beautiful. Oh yeah, she's stunning. I've never seen her and not thought she looked beautiful. I'm glad she doesn't have her little purse. <laughs> but there's a two. She looks beautiful and I give her a two. Next we bring to the stage, Rosé. Rosé is wearing almost the same thing you've got on your head. Fascinating. Just about, yeah. I love it. La vie en rose. I do too. The ruffles all over the dress goes so well. She looks like she has a bouquet. This looks really, really beautiful, all tied in together with the gown. Rosé has done a beautiful job putting this look together, and her fascinator really is truly fascinating. And I also love the nod to the thorns. She's got thorns on her glove. She's got thorns on her belt. And this dress, even without the fascinator, this dress is beautiful. Yeah, two. I give her a two. Next, we bring to the stage... Utica. So there are bugs coming out of the basket. Oh, I love this. I think it's really cute. Utica is on a picnic. She's got little ants crawling up her leg. She's got a picnic basket with all of her goodies and things flying out of it. I love the checker of the outfit itself. And I think it's wonderful, actually. It's a really cute game. I love the gingham garter belts. And I love that they're just kind of connected to that beige yeah. boot to where it kind of looks like she doesn't have a boot on. She's got garter belts on, so f it. I'm going on a picnic in my garter belts, mama. I go to picnics in garter belts all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know what they're eating. That ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a two. Two. Next we bring to the stage... Simone. Work Simone, yes. 
I love that fastener. It's kind of um, almost religious looking. Oh, yeah. She almost gives us like the Pope. Oh, and then she turns around and she's got a very powerful message. I feel that as drag queens and as artists, you should reflect what is happening in your times. That is one of the jobs of being an artist. And it is one that involves what is happening in today's society, especially here in America. You know, I really appreciate this. Even if it didn't have the message that it does, it's still a beautiful look. The fascinator is beautiful. The gown is gorgeous. She looks stunning as always. But then to turn around and have that piece, there's no way you can't toot it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The fascinator has a little bit of an origami kind of folded and abstract kind of feel. That's what makes it really extra beautiful. And I love seeing all white like that. It's daring because it's so hard to wear when you're in drag because you're touching so many cosmetics and different things in the room that can just really f that up. And she walked out there with not a smudge on that look. The front and the back, everything about this gets an absolute toot. Toot. All right, next we bring to the stage, Denali. The bitch is on rollerblades. She is a car hop. I think this is brilliant because back in the day, 10 years ago, I wore a bucket of blood that was suspended and pouring down onto my head. And this is that old trick, honey, that comes around every once in a while. It is not a new one, but this one is a very brilliant and innovative way of doing it. And she's got all the condiments in her hand and the coffee is pouring hot, darling. And she looks gorgeous. The outfit fits beautifully. I've always loved this look, the cute car hop 1950s waitress look because it's just something that I think lends itself to drag. The nipped in waist, the cute little skirt with the crinlin, the collar, and that she came out on rollerblades added points. If you have a particular skill that can be used on the main stage, honey, bring it out. She's really done a great job with this and I give her a two. Two. Next we bring to the stage, Got Mick. Oh, work bitch. It's a giant, safety pin right through the center of her skull. I love this. Nothing is more punk rock than a f safety pin. I've been doing it since high school. And since before high school, I've safety pinned things onto things. So to me, this brings a lot of nostalgia to me and it's adorable. This whole outfit is, is just a perfect homage to punk rock. It's got the spray paint, it's got the graffiti, it's sort of torn up in different places and it has all of those elements that really bring that edge and angst of punk rock in there. And how better to top it all off than to wear an actual safety pin through your head. I give her a toot. Toot, I love the whole look. Next we bring to the stage, Elliot with two T's. I'm really confused on this one. I need to take a closer look. There's no confusion about this whatsoever. The trouble for me is that it is all confusion. Why the beige leg? Why the kind of florally print, the hair? All of those things are distracting from the theme itself, which is supposed to bring all of the focus into the fascinator. The thing on the head suddenly is being drowned out by this enormous wig and that ghastly costume. I don't understand understand it. I think it is one that just should not all be put together. So the thing that I like the most is the fascinator and everything else is sort of taking away from it. The hair is really cool too. Why are you wearing a beige skirt on one of your legs and then a beige sleeve on the other. It's very weird looking. If she would have taken the skirt off the leg and the little skirt off her arm, it actually wouldn't be that bad of a look. If you really kind of take those out, it actually, not that bad. But then it would have been even more fierce if she had a full pink tight tiny little wig on and just the fascinator on top of a tiny petite little pussycat wig. It's all about the styling decisions and choices and maybe the lack of, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to describe this. I do. It is a boot. It's a boot. Next, we bring to the stage, Tina Burner. She's supposed to be the prize winning horse. She got the blue ribbon. No, listen, I like, I love the, the outfit. I like the fit of it. I like that there's a little bit of that equestrian feel. She's got a blue ribbon, a crop in her hand, the boots. And then, you know, the, the focal point of the challenge is the fascinator. And the fascinator is so janky. It's flopping backwards. It wanted to stay back behind the stage. But the thing is, is when you're really breaking this outfit down in its entirety, I don't think the actual garment itself fits her well. I think it does look a little baggy. If you're gonna take flowers 
from a craft store and use them on a garment. Do something to them to make them not look like you just took them off the plastic stem and glued them on to your costume. Shellac them, put a couple rhinestones, put some glitter, do something where it, it, it almost seems like, wow, you took your time because you really wanted to make this look a success. It is a funny nod to what a fascinator is, wearing a horse head on top of your head. This is gonna be a boot for me. This boot. Last but not least, Candy Muse. Oh, okay, I see what she did there. With pheasant feathers, she's got her name across the top of her head. Love it. I don't love it. You don't? I love it. I love it because it has a this nod to Philip Treacy. Um, there's also like, there's a, uh, uh, I, I, you know, where you can shape the feathers into letters. I like the outfit too. I do like the outfit. I love that white and black. You know, I love black and white. I love black and white. Black and white houndstooth. Yes. Uh, I'll give it a two. It's a two from me as well. Trend, Trend alert. Gloves. Gloves. Baggy gloves. No glove, no love. Clubs. Our, Our top, top two, two of the week, week is Simone. Simone Gorge. Oh, gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. Simone. She brought that glamour you were asking for last week, girl. Yes, yeah, sure enough. Look at her. She got the top two. Mm -mm -mm. Be sure to watch an all new episode of RuPaul's Drag Race every Friday on VH1. And if you don't have VH1 where you're at, which is most likely outside of the United States, you can watch RuPaul's Drag Race 13 on WOW Presents Plus. You know, Raven, it's really, really been, how do I say this? Fascinating. Oh, honey. Bye. Bye. Fascinating. Bring back my girls. Bring back my girls. Bring back my girls. Bring back my girls.